someone in the chat yeah. just said if you're taking 50 or trades then a 10 percent win rate is good enough what do you think about that what do you think about ct's obsession with win rate and then second of all like ballpark what's your win rate what kind of setups do you prefer taking like the high or low percentage setups or the low or high percentage setups yeah so if you're taking 15 r trades and a 10 percent win rate is enough that's true technically it's enough if you have a 10 percent win rate on a 15 r trade you can multiply those two together and that gives you 1.5 anything above one means that it's worth taking essentially and anything below one means it's not say you have a 10 r trade that has a 10 percent win rate that means you're going to lose nine out of ten times but the one time that you win you'll make back ten times what you lose that gets you a break even essentially we don't know the probability of success so it's not as simple as i'm describing it but kind of a way to think about it is if you have a trade that has a five R risk reward setup and you think that the probability of success is 25%, if you multiply five times 0.25, you get 1.25. If that's above one, then it's worth taking. Let's say you have a four R trade, but you think probability of success is 10%. That means nine out of 10 times, you're going to lose that four R trade. Then you multiply 10% times four and that gives you 0.4. That's under one. That's not a good trade to take. So that's one way that you can kind of look at it. If you're going for 15 R trades every time and there's a 10% success rate, it's worth taking. That's true, but that's still a 1.5 when you do the calculation. I want to take trade setups that are two, three, four, for example, where the probability of success is very high and the risk reward is also high. And so if I have a four R trade with an 80% probability of success, you multiply four times 0.8. I don't even know what that is. It's high. It's over two or three, right? So those are the type of trades that I'm more interested in. Even a two R trade that has a 90% probability of success. That's a 1.8. That's almost close to two in that calculation that we do. That's a trade that I'm happy to take. So it's about a combination of them being high risk reward reward and high probability. And oftentimes you may be taking a low risk reward trade, maybe a two R or three R trade with a very wide stop loss, but that gives it a high probability of success. And then as price action progresses and the trade starts moving in your direction and you get further confirmation, you can always compound that trade and increase the risk reward essentially as the trade develops. So that's what I do a lot is I'll enter a pretty safe trade. Sol, for example, if I said that it's fair game to go up to 180, 190, and I'm targeting, you know, a hundred bucks, here that looks like a 2R trade. It doesn't look great. But once we break down back inside this range, I can then compound that position with another trade that looks something like this and that gives me 4R. And now all of a sudden I'm at 6R for this setup. Of course, when you're doing this, you need to adjust your position size accordingly. Because I have such a wide stop loss, for example, my position size is smaller. But as we get confirmation, you can add on to that position size and all of a sudden it becomes more sizable and more significant. And now you're making good money without necessarily taking as much risk right off the bat. Yeah, I can completely agree with that. When I first started trading, I would always go for the home runs. I would always go for the 10 or the 15 or the 20 or setups. And like one out of every however many would play out and I would think I was a god. But then there was so many that didn't play out. I found that the key for me at least to consistent profitability is to just focus on the repeatable setups, the incremental gains and compounding those small returns over time. And eventually my account is doubling, tripling in the space of a few months or a year. And that's actually actually been far greater a benefit to my profitability than going for these home run trades every time trying to catch the huge move trying to catch the pico top the pico bottom whatever it is what's your take on that yeah, so I think that kind of goes back to understanding the trading environment that you're in. What you're describing is exactly the way that I've been approaching us while we've been inside this range. And that is taking profits aggressively, not looking for extremes to exit, but rather to enter and just taking profits at initial take profit levels. Because within a range, you get so much chop and back and forth that a lot of times if you're waiting for that home run short or long, you're not going to get it. And you're going to end up seeing a reversal because we're in a range before those targets are met. So when we're in a ranging environment like this, that's the idea. Enter at the extremes and then take profit aggressively. Don't hold out for one extreme to another because odds are within there, you're going to get a bunch of chop and volatility and you're probably going to see your gains reverse within that period of time. So on the other hand, like when we're in a trending environment, that's when I'm looking for those home runs. That's when I'm looking for the 10R, 15R, 20R trade. I can't remember what it was exactly, but there were some alts during this last run up that I got like some crazy 20R trade on or something like that. And in trending markets, that sort of trade becomes becomes a lot more realistic because at that point, if you manage to secure a safe entry and price starts moving up, it's up only. And you just let it ride until it makes sense to lock in gains. You can get some massive risk reward trades in there. And again, that's in a trending environment. But in this sort of chop that we've had for the last eight months, you have to kind of think the opposite way. Instead of looking for the home runs, you're looking for the short and sweet moves like you mentioned. And just those alone, because of the chop and the up and down within this range, you can do a lot of that and you can make a lot of money. And so as long as you're adjusting for that, I think you can be very successful in both environments.